Hi guys, my name is Mara and I'm gonna guide you through a 45 minutes all around flexibility flow. We're gonna begin this class by laying on our backs. So take a moment to come down on the mat and you can have uh, legs and arms extended. Or maybe if there's any lower back tension, you bring the soles of the feet as wide as the mat and drop the knees in towards each other. Maybe you want to start with a passive hip opener instead, so the feet can come together. And maybe your hands are coming onto your heart and onto your belly. Closing the eyes for a moment and allowing yourself to arrive here. To arrive on the mat. Arrive into the body. Noticing your breath. Starting uh, to make it a little bit deeper. Each inhale and each exhale. Noticing that rising and falling sensations that are happening into the body as you're breathing in and out. Starting to shift the focus more and more into the present moment. And check in with yourself. Notice where your mind is at. If you're going through to-do lists. If you're holding on to anything that you collected throughout the day. See if you can gently let go of any of that. Bringing the focus to your breath. Checking in with your body as well. Noticing any areas where there might be any tension, some discomfort, any areas where you might feel tight. And just acknowledge, without bringing any judgment, any criticism, without having too much expectations. Allow yourself to arrive here exactly as you are. We're going to take the next few breaths to set an intention for this practice. Anything that you wish to focus on as we're moving around the mat. Anything that you wish to let go of, perhaps. Allow this intention to become clear in your mind. And then imagine it like a seed that you're planting deep into your heart space. We're going to take a big breath in through the nose and a big release out through the mouth. So to gently wiggle your body, find a little bit of movement. If your knees are wide apart, bring the hands behind the thighs and guide them together. We're all going to bring the knees into the chest, giving yourself a big squeeze, maybe rocking from side to side. Massaging your lower back. Your eyes can still be closed if you wish to. Or you can gently blink them open now. We're going to release the left sole of the foot down onto the ground. And now if you have a strap, you can feel free to use it. Otherwise, you can uh, keep the hands on the back of your right thigh. Maybe on the back of your calf. Or if you have already quite some space in your hamstring, you can grab hold of the big toe with your peace finger. Your left hand comes onto your left hip bone as you're stretching your right leg. The knee can be bent. It's just the beginning of the practice, so be very mindful of your body, of what's happening, making sure that you're not bringing any pain. Taking a few deep breaths here. Allowing more space to come into the body. Inviting new energy. Keep that left hand onto your left hip and keep press it down so it doesn't lift as you're reaching the right foot on the floor towards the right side. You're opening now, you're bringing that opening sensation into the inner thigh, into the groin. And again, the knee can stay bent, you can keep hold behind the calf or behind the thigh. Finding a sense of release, of letting go. Mm, 
one more breath here. And guide the foot back through center, the leg back through center. You're going to bend the knee out to the side and you're going to bring the ankle on top of your left thigh. You're going to allow the foot to stick out so you can take a few circles and stretch the ankle. We're finding this figure of four where you're focusing on sending the energy of your right knee towards the front corner of the mat, the movement coming from the hip, not just the knee. And you can stay here if this is intense enough already, or you can grab hold of the back of your left thigh. Bringing the legs a little bit closer towards the chest, keeping both feet active here. And still you're reaching that right knee away from you. Feeling the stretch into the outer hip, into the IT band, into the glutes. Taking a couple of deep breaths in this pose. Noticing any physical sensations that might arise. And then keep the legs as they are and release your hands. You're going to drop the foot all the way towards the left, onto the floor, keeping the right shoulder glued onto the ground, finding a twist. And you can stay exactly as you landed, or maybe you can go a little bit deeper by dropping that right knee down towards the ground. You can uh, keep the head neutral, or you can look towards the right if it feels good for your neck. Allowing uh, movement into the spine here. And almost imagining that you're wringing out anything that doesn't support you. Anything that doesn't serve you. Anything that you don't want to hold on to anymore. And gently come back all the way through center. Bringing the knees in, giving yourself a squeeze, and then releasing the right sole of the foot down onto the ground and extending the left foot up towards the sky. Again, taking your option here, hands behind the thigh, behind the calf, or maybe grabbing hold of the big toe with your peace finger. Making sure the left shoulder doesn't lift too much off the ground, but you keep drawing it back. The knee can stay bent. Right hand onto your right hip. Feeling that sense of spaciousness you're bringing into the body. And then you're going to open uh, towards the side, towards the left. Allowing the foot to drop towards the floor. But keeping that right hip bone pressing down. Opening into your inner thigh, into the groin. And then gently coming back through center, releasing uh, the toe, the calf, and uh, bringing the ankle on top of your right thigh. Flexing your foot, allowing it to stick out and take a few circles here, stretching into the ankle. Finding the energy of the knee moving towards the left front corner of the mat. You can stay here as before, or you can grab hold of the back of your right thigh. Deep breaths. It can be quite an intense stretch, so take any options, any modifications that feels better into your own body. Keeping the legs as they are, release your hands and drop the foot all the way towards the right. And you can stay with the knee pointing up or you can allow it to drop towards the floor, going a little bit deeper into the twist. Opening the left arm into a T-shape or cactus shape and maybe you're looking towards the left as well. Adding to the twist with your head as well. Enjoying in this movement that we're bringing into the spine. Releasing any lower back tension. And then gently coming once again all the way back through center. Bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a squeeze. And then uh, rock back and forth a few times. <laughs> all the way up to seated, crossing uh, your legs and moving forward into your tabletop position. Take your time to get there, spread the fingertips wide and allow the um, wrists to be stuck underneath your shoulders and the knees underneath your hips. We're going to move through a few cat cows here. So with your inhale, the belly comes down, you're pressing the floor away, opening the heart. Exhale, chin to chest, round the spine up towards the sky. And again, inhale, shining your heart forward, creating space into the neck. Exhale, round the spine. 
Once again, like this, inhale, open your heart. Exhale, create space between each vertebrae as you're rounding the spine. And from the next one, you can keep moving in the same way. Or maybe you start adding extra movements here. Maybe you're closing the eyes, tapping into that intuition. Heightening uh, your awareness. Maybe creating bigger waves through the spine. Maybe finding circles with your torso. Maybe stretching your wrist. You can do that by flipping the fingertips towards the knees. These are all just option, of course. Maybe you're stretching the soles of the feet. You can do that by tacking your toes. You're warming up here. You're exploring your own body. Finding what feels good, what areas uh, perhaps need a little bit more attention, a little bit more kindness, what areas need a little bit more softness. Just a couple more breaths as you're moving. Before making your way all the way into a neutral spine, into your tabletop position. Now we're going to keep the hips in line with the knees and we're going to start walking the hands all the way forward towards our puppy pose. And uh, maybe you feel quite tight so your forehead will not reach the mat, that's okay. If you have a block you can also bring it underneath it. Or maybe the forehead comes down onto the ground. After a few breaths, if you feel you have a little bit more space, maybe the chin comes forward releasing the chest down towards the floor, keeping your hips lifted, your hands, your arms reaching forward, allowing uh, the stretch to up and across your chest into the armpits, across your belly, allowing your heart to open. We're taking one more deep breath here. And then keeping the hands where they are, gently allow your body to lift up, rounding uh, softly the spine and uh, leaning yourself all the way towards the front. Releasing the thighs and the hips and bringing the forearms down. Aligning the elbows more or less underneath the shoulders. If this feels too intense for, for your lower spine, you can uh, move them forward slightly. Now, <clears throat> allow the hands to reach back. So they're not going to move physically, but the energy is drawing back as your heart shines forward. Your neck is long in line with the spine, so you're looking on the floor slightly in front of you. Now we're going to bend the right knee, and we're going to reach the right hand back to grab hold of the foot. We're going to bring it all the way towards our butt cheek. And you can stay here. Maybe, if it feels good for the shoulder, you're pivoting the fingertips towards the front, bringing the heel a little bit closer towards you. And maybe you stay. Maybe you're lifting that left forearm off the ground. Make sure you're not sinking here, but you're still pressing away. So there's space into the neck. Feeling the stretch into the quadriceps. One of the tightest areas in our body. So if it feels very intense, make sure you're taking your option, you're softening. Releasing the forearm down if it was lifted. Releasing the foot with control, coming back into your sphinx. I'm moving on to the opposite side, bending the left knee, grabbing hold of the foot and moving it towards your butt cheek. This can be intense enough already, you can stay. Or maybe your fingertips are flipping forward, maybe your right forearm lifts off the ground. Keep pressing the ground away so there's space into the neck, space into the chest, between shoulder and ear. And then gently release the forearm down with control. Let go of your foot. Coming all the way down this time onto the mat. And have a gentle wiggle front of the hips from side to side. Now we're going to open the left arm out to the side into a T-shape. And we're going to reach the right foot all the way towards the fingertips. And uh, your hips may still be quite close to the ground. That's okay. Maybe your body allows you to open. Finding uh, your space, your option. What feels good into your own body. Making sure you can still breathe deeply here. And then releasing, coming all the way back through center. 
and moving straight onto the other side. So your right arm this time opens and you're reaching the left toes all the way towards the right. Noticing if one side felt a little bit looser than the other, or maybe a little bit tighter. Just observe what's happening, get to know your body a little bit better. And coming all the way back through center. Now bring the hands underneath your shoulders and push the ground away, making your way back into your tabletop position. Straight away we're transitioning into a side plank. So the left foot goes out to the side, the right leg reaches back, right fingertips to the sky. Shoulders stuck one on top of the other, tucking the tailbone, engaging the core, finding your energy here. And then reaching the right fingertips towards the front, right foot lifts off the ground, finding that long stretch. Inhale here, exhale, elbow and knees together as you're rounding the spine. Inhale to extend, find that expansion. Exhale, draw it all in. Two more times. Inhale, reach. Exhale. And one last one. Inhale to expand. Exhale to bring it in. Inhale to reach. Now bend the knees and circle the arm back behind you. Grab hold of the foot and see if you can keep the heel hidden behind your thigh and kick the foot into your hand as you're pressing your hips, your chest forward. Feeling the stretch across the whole front of your body. With control, start guiding that right knee all the way into the chest, releasing the foot, maybe giving it a squeeze in, and then allow your foot to step all the way at the front, the left toes pointing back once again. Right fingertips to the sky, coming into a twisted lunge. Allowing your chest to open. Again, if you are using blocks, you might want to bring one underneath your left hand to give you a little bit more height. And then uh, releasing the twist, reaching the left fingertips up towards the ceiling as well bringing the palms together and dropping them behind your head. Now allow your elbows to draw in towards each other, towards your head. You're gonna lift and lengthen through both sides of your torso. And exhale, maybe melting the hips a little bit more further forward. And you can stay here or you have one option to challenge yourself. You can lift that left foot off the ground, opening your heart a little bit more towards the sky. can be very challenging for the balance. So if you're wobbling, that's okay. And then with control, release the foot down. Come back through center and bring the hands to frame the foot. Step back onto your knees. And now keeping the hips lifted, melt the chest between your hands, chin onto the mat, looking forward. And then slide the torso through, opening up into your cobra, shoulders away from the ears. Push the ground away, hips towards the heels and all the way up towards the sky, coming into your first downward dog. Taking just a few movements here to stretch through the hamstrings. Any other movement you want to bring, feel free to do so. Any wiggles into the hips, into the shoulders. And then coming into a place of stillness just for a few moments. Focusing on pressing fully through your palms. Making sure there's no lift between thumb and index, so you're keeping the weight equal on your wrists. Lengthening the spine, reaching the tailbone high, bending the knees if you need to. Now we're going to bend the knees and we're going to bring them to hover off the ground. And from here, you're going to focus on reaching the heels down towards the mat, extending the legs again, bringing a stretch into the calves. It doesn't matter if the heels don't touch the ground. You're just moving them in that direction. Two more times like this, bring the knees to hover and then press the heels down. Allow the stretch to come into your calves. One more. Release, bring them to hover and then press the heels down. Back into your downward dog. Now bend the knees and come forward back into your tabletop position. Transition into a supported side plank, right foot goes out, left foot at the back and uh, left fingertips to the sky. Find your supported side plank, find your energy here from the ground lifting you all the way up. The core is engaged, your glutes are active and then reach the left fingertips all the way towards the front and lift the left foot off the ground. Inhale here, exhale, draw elbow knees together as you're rounding the spine. 
Inhale to extend, finding that stretch. Exhale to bring it in. Two more times. Inhale, reach forward and back. Exhale, round. One last one. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale to extend. And now bend the knee and circle the arm behind, grabbing hold of the foot. Kick the foot into your hand as you keep it hidden behind your thigh, opening the chest forward. A couple of deep breaths here. And then start guiding with control that knee all the way into the chest, releasing the foot. Maybe you're giving it a little squeeze before stepping the foot at the front of the mat, allowing the right toes to point back, reaching the fingertips up towards the sky, coming into your twisted lunge, keeping your chest open, inviting that twist, that movement through the spine. And then release, reaching both hands up towards the sky, bring the palms together and drop them behind your head, wrapping the elbows in towards each other, lift and lengthen through the sides of the torso, through the chest, and exhale, maybe melting the hips a little bit more further forward. You can stay here, or as before, you challenge yourself by lifting the right foot off the ground. Still breathing, making sure there's no pain into your lower spine. If there is, take a step back. Maybe find more activation through your glutes. And then with control, release the foot. Come all the way back through center, frame that front foot and step back, coming onto your knees, keeping the hips lifted, chest between your hands, chin onto the mat. And then slide the torso through and open into your cobra. Shining your heart forward and then pressing the ground away, hips towards the heels and all the way high towards the sky, downward facing dog. Arriving here, finding the same alignment as we had before, pressing fully through the palms, arms extended as you're pressing the ground away. Lengthening the spine. Bend the knees, look towards the front. Step the right foot forward and the left to follow, keeping them underneath the hips. The knees are soft, the knees are bent. So you can relax completely through your upper body. Maybe grabbing all the opposite elbows and find a gentle sway from side to side. Letting go of any unnecessary tension from your shoulders, from the neck. Allowing stress to melt away. And then release the hands down, bend the knees even more. Keep the head heavy as you slowly unravel your whole body up to standing. Finding your mountain pose, shoulders up towards the ears and all the way back behind you, palms facing forward. Feel the connection of your feet to the ground, the activation, the energy through the body, the lift of the crown of the head to the sky. Big breath in. And big release out. Now we're gonna prepare for a chair pose. It's gonna be a bit of a funky one. So we're gonna bring the feet together. We're gonna interlace the hands behind us, the fingertips behind us. We're gonna bend the knees. And as we're doing so, the hands are moving away from our lower back and we're puffing the chest forward. So we're finding a back bend here. Looking uh, in front of you. And then allowing the belly to come down towards the thighs and the hands to reach all the way above the head, at least energetically, towards the floor in front of you. The knees can be soft here. Allowing the shoulders stretch. Releasing the hands all the way down. Inhale, find your halfway up, lengthening the spine. And exhale, plant the hands, step back into your plank. Bringing the belly button towards the spine, hands active, press the ground away. And then slowly lean forward and release yourself all the way down onto the mat. With your next inhale, reach the hands back, lift your chest up, lift your legs, coming into your locust. Finding a place where you can still breathe, keeping the neck long. Now keep the chest lifted, release the, the legs down and bring the elbows underneath your shoulders, finding your sphinx. Opening the heart and exhale, release yourself down. Hands underneath your shoulders, push the ground away. Send the hips back and up, downward facing dog. We're gonna join the big toes together. We're gonna lift the heels high off the ground and we're gonna drop them all the way towards the left side. Bending the knees and sending the hips all the way back. Your right hand is still in contact with the ground. You can bring it a little bit closer towards you if you need it. 
bringing that stretch deeply into the side of your torso. And then we're going to transition into a side plank and you have two options. You can come forward and as you do so, your left knee comes underneath the hip like we did before. Or maybe you're staying onto the outside edge of your left foot, coming forward, both legs extended, right fingertips to the sky, finding your full side plank. Hips are lifted here, embracing any shake that you might be experiencing. All the wobbles. Now guide that right knee into the chest and step the foot forward. If it doesn't land there, grab hold of the ankle and move it towards the front. Reaching the right fingertips up, coming into your twisted lunge. Release the back knee down onto the ground, come forward, reach both hands to the front. Interlace the fingertips apart for, for index and thumb and extend your right leg as you're reaching back, opening the heart. Coming all the way forward with control, hands onto the mat. Inhale, open your heart, lengthen the spine. Exhale, send the hips back. Don't focus on extending the leg. If your hamstring feels tight, you can keep a bent or you can grab hold of blocks either side of your legs, giving yourself support. Either way, your foot is flexed, the toes are pointing up. Two more times, with your breath in, you're coming forward, you're opening your chest. With your exhale, you're moving back. And again, inhale, come forward. Exhale, find your half splits, your variation here. Trying to keep length through the spine. Your leg active. Maybe it feels good to fold forward, maybe it feels good to stay a little bit more lifted. Finding the option that works for your body. Inhale, come halfway up, lengthen the spine. Now, we're gonna walk the hands all the way towards the right side. Keeping the hips squaring forward. Noticing how the stretch changes. And then back through center. And uh, again, focusing on keeping the hips pointing towards the front, you're moving the hands towards the left. Sending that right hip back. We're coming back through center, but we're gonna keep the hands onto the inside of your right foot. So we're gonna wiggle it a little bit more towards the side, making space. Coming to the front, into your lizard. You can stay onto your hands, or you can come down onto your forearms. We're gonna tack the toes, and we're gonna lift the back knee up, and release it down. Two more times. Lift, and release. One last one. Lift, and this time stay. Just for a couple of breaths here. Release the back knee down. Come back up onto your hands. Now we're going to bring that left knee underneath the hip. So we're going to shorten the stance by bringing it forward. And we're going to circle the right leg all the way back behind us. Bending the knee and reaching the toes towards the sky. As you're doing so, you're pressing the floor away, opening the heart. Exhale, bring the knee in towards the nose, round the spine, engage the core. And again, inhale, reach the toes up towards the sky, open your heart. Exhale, bring the knee in, round your back. One last time, inhale to reach back, finding your back bend. Exhale, bring the knee in. Now stay here, and as we're staying, you're going to tack your left toes. So the next time you're reaching the right leg back, you're lifting the left knee off the ground, coming into a three-legged dog. Right leg reaches long towards the sky. Now shift your weight forward, coming into a three-legged plank. So your right leg stays lifted. Your shoulders are coming on top of your wrists. Now release the left knee down. Bring the chest between your hands, chin onto the mat, lifting the right leg a little bit higher and then release it down onto the mat. Slide the torso through, open your heart, and then push the hips all the way back and up, downward facing dog. Reconnect with your breath here. Reconnect with that intention we set at the beginning of the practice. And then bring the big toes together Lift the heels high off the mat and drop them all the way towards the right side, bending the knees, sending the hips back, feeling the stretch into the left side of your body, of your torso. And same option here as we're moving into a side plank. Maybe your right knee comes underneath the hip. Maybe you're staying onto the outside edge of your right foot, extending the legs, left fingertips towards the sky. 
Embracing all shakes, all wobbles. Any other variation that you might have taken onto the other side, feel free to add it here as well. And then we're going to guide that left knee into the chest and we're going to step the foot all the way to the front, keeping the left fingertips up towards the sky. Now release the back knee down, reach both hands towards the front, interlace the fingertips apart from index and thumb and reach all the way back as you're extending the left leg long, opening the heart. And gently come all the way forward with control. Release the hands onto the mat, inhale, open your heart. Exhale, send the hips back. Two more times, inhale, coming forward. Exhale, back. One more, inhale, reach towards the front, open your heart. Try to keep this length through the spine as you're reaching the hips back, arriving into your half split. Keeping your front foot flexed, the toes pointing up. Maybe finding a little bit more of a fold if it feels good in your body. And then lifting back up halfway and walking the hands all the way towards the left side. Keeping the hips squaring forward. And then back through center. And uh, making sure your hips are not moving, you're walking the hands towards the right. Coming back through center, this time you're keeping both hands onto the inside of your left foot, bending the knee and coming forward into your lizard. And as before, you can stay onto your hands or you can come down onto your forearms. We're going to tack the toes and we're going to lift the back knee up and release it down. Two more times. Inhale to lift. Exhale, release. One more. Inhale, lift up. Exhale to stay this time. Just a couple of breaths here. And then release. Bring the back knee down onto the ground. Come back onto your hands if you were on your forearms. Guide that right knee underneath the hip so you're shortening the stance. And your left leg circles all the way back, bending the knee, reaching the toes up and opening the heart. Exhale, bring the knee towards the nose, round the spine up. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, round. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Now stay a little bit longer. Give yourself time to tuck your right toes. So the next time you're reaching the left leg back, you're lifting that right knee off the ground, coming into your three-legged dog. Moving forward, three-legged plank, shoulders stacking on top of your wrists. And then release the right knee down. Melt the chest between your hands, lift the leg a little bit higher and then bring the knee back down onto the mat as well. Sliding the torso through, opening up into your back bend. Now pushing the hips back and up, coming into your downward facing dog. And again, finding that connection with your breath, noticing your heartbeat. Coming back once again to that intention. Making it clear into your mind one more time. Now we're gonna bend the knees and look forward. You're gonna step or jump the feet onto the outside of your hands, coming straight into your malasana. You're bringing the hands into prayer heart center, finding length through the spine. Your heels can be lifted, you can bring blocks underneath both of your feet. Finding a little bit more support. Gently pressing the thighs away. Find a point of focus onto the ground. Breathe. And then we're going to reach the right hand out to the side, keeping the upper arm onto the inside of the knee. Make sure your left knee doesn't collapse inwards. You're still pressing out, reaching the left fingertips towards the sky, opening the chest. And then coming back through center and moving straight away onto the other side, left hand out, right hand towards the ceiling. And back through center one more time. Find your malasana. And then release the hands down onto the ground. Step back into your plank position. From here, lean forward. Release down all the way down onto the mat. 
Inhale, find your locus, lifting your chest, lifting your legs. And exhale this time, release down. Bring the hands underneath your shoulders, come up into your cobra. Push the hips all the way back towards the heels and high towards the sky, downward facing dog. <sighs> now right leg reaches high towards the sky, bend the knee and open the hip. Allow the right hip to stack on top of the left as your right knee reaches at least energetically up towards the sky. So it might not be there physically, that's okay. You're moving it in that direction. Equal weight on both of your hands. You can stay here or maybe you're coming with control into your wild thing, dropping the foot on the floor behind you. Allow full rotation of the body, lifting the hips, opening the heart. And then with control, you're moving back. Three-legged dog, right leg reaches high. Exhale, bring the knee towards the nose, shoulders on top of your wrist, and lightly step the foot forward, bringing it between your hands. Reach the right fingertips up towards the sky, once again coming into your twisted lunge. Now, as we're reaching the fingertips back, you're gonna start extending the right leg long. And as you keep circling, as your fingertips are reaching forward again, the knee bends. And again, two more times like this, reaching back, extending the leg. Reaching forward, bending the knee. One more time, reaching back and all the way to the front. This time, as you're circling up and back, you're going to lift your torso up, stacking it on top of your hips. Now, make sure that your left hip didn't come forward to help you twist more. But instead, we want both of our hip bones pointing towards the front and twisting just using our core strength. So maybe it's a little bit less twisty, but that's okay. Releasing the twist, reaching both arms up, find your high lunge. Now bend the elbows, bring the back knee to hover, open your heart, and then reach towards the front. Hands are coming into your heart center. Shift the weight onto your right foot. Take as many steps with your left forward as you need until you can lift it up coming into your warrior three. Now with control, bring the left hand onto your left hip, right hand down onto the ground, and gently start to open your whole body towards the long side of the mat. Once you found your stability, maybe your left fingertips are reaching up towards the sky, find your half moon. Soften the knees and uh, try to step as far back with your left foot as you can, landing straight into your warrior two. Soften your elbows, soften your shoulders. We're moving into a skandasana. So your left toes are pointing back. You're bending the left knee. Coming down, hands can stay on the ground to support you. Or maybe you're bringing them into your heart center. Keeping your chest open, your spine long. And then walking all the way towards the front. Gently pivoting the hips forward, framing the foot. And stepping back, taking your vinyasa, your option. Or maybe going straight into your downward dog. Left leg reaches high to the sky, bend the knee and open the hip. Now you have the option to stay here as before, or with control, drop the foot on the floor behind you, finding your wild thing, lifting the hips, opening the heart. And then with control, you're coming all the way back. Three-legged dog, reaching the left leg high towards the sky. Exhale, bring it in towards the nose, shoulders on top of your wrists and lightly step the foot forward, bringing it between your hands. Left fingertips towards the sky. Once again, your twisted lunge. And then start reaching the fingertips back, finding a circle. And as you're doing that, your left leg extends. And as you're reaching forward, your knee bends. And again, two more times, reaching back. And coming forward, bending the knee. One last one, reaching back. This time as you're reaching forward, you're getting your momentum to lift yourself all the way up into your twisted high lunge. Making sure your right hip doesn't come all the way forward, but it's still pointing towards the front. Breathing here. And then releasing the twist, both arms to the sky. Find your high lunge. Bending the arms, opening the chest, bringing the back knee to hover off the ground. And then reaching forward, hands are coming into your chest. You're shifting the weight all the way into your left foot, taking as many steps as you need with your right until you can lift it off the ground, finding your warrior three. Embracing all wobbles or shakes if you're falling, that's okay. 
Let go of any attachment towards the pose. Let go of any frustration. Bring the right hand onto your right hip. Left hand down onto the ground. Slowly start to open your whole body towards the long side of the mat. And once you've found your stability, you can reach the right fingertips towards the sky as well. Standing strong on your leg. And then softening that front knee and stepping as far back as you can with your right foot. Finding your warrior two. Keeping that external rotation into the front thigh, softening the shoulders. And then transitioning into your side lunge at the back of the mat. So your right toes are going to point back, right knee bends, lowering down and finding your option here. Keeping your chest open, your spine long, and then walking all the way towards the front, framing that front foot, pivoting the hips and stepping back, taking your vinyasa, or maybe going straight into your downward dog. Arriving here, we're towards the end of the class. So you can take a big breath in through the nose and a big release out through the mouth. <sighs> now bend the knees, look forward. Step or hop to seated at the front of the mat. Now we're going to come into a Bada So we're going to bring the soles of the feet together, the heels close towards your groin area. You're going to gently press with your elbows, the knees away, the thighs away. You're going to inhale to lengthen and exhale to forward fold. Breathing deeply. And gently lift yourself up. Lengthen the spine once again. Bring the hands behind your knees and guide them all the way together. Now we're going to start laying all the way onto the mat. Coming down onto our back. Bringing the heels as close towards your butt cheek as you can and keeping the feet and the knees hip distance. So they're more or less a fist distance apart. So make sure that you're keeping this engagement and this alignment throughout the next transition and the next pose. So you want energy through your legs. Palms are facing down, fingertips are reaching towards the heels. You're going to inhale to imprint the whole spine down onto the ground. And exhale to start lifting the hips, the thighs, the pelvis, up towards the sky. Finding your bridge pose. Make sure your knees are not splaying wide. You're keeping them tracking over your toes. Glutes active. You can even give a little poke to your butt, making sure he's engaged. And then slowly vertebra by vertebra, you're going to release your back down onto the mat. Now we're going to take it one more time and you're going to have two options. You can take once again your bridge pose or you can come up into your wheel. So I'm going to cue, we're going to move together. We're going to inhale to imprint the spine down. Exhale to lift the hips up. We're all starting from here. Now you can stay, maybe you can interlace the fingertips behind your back. If you're moving into wheel, then the hands are coming either side of the ears. Fingertips pointing towards the shoulders. And you're going to press the ground away, so to come onto the crown of the head. And from here, you're pressing the floor away, opening your heart, keeping your glutes engaged. Two more breaths. And slowly, you're going to come down the same way you came up. Gently releasing vertebra by vertebra, the whole spine down onto the ground. Now resist the temptation to bring the knees straight into the chest, but instead bring the feet as wide as the mat and drop the knees in towards each other. Allowing a moment for your spine to almost reset itself. And then we're going to drop the knees from side to side. Finding gentle twist as a counterbalance for all the back bends. And once your knees are reaching towards the right, you can stay exactly as you are. Or you can uh, take any variation of your twist, uh, going a little bit deeper, maybe bringing the knees together, maybe crossing the legs. Left arm, left shoulders is in contact with the ground. And you can look towards the left, allowing perhaps your eyes to close. 
Let's take two more deep breaths here. And then with control, you're bringing the knees back through center and you're taking a similar option onto the other side. Opening your right arm and maybe keeping your eyes closed. Coming all the way back through center now. Bringing the knees into the chest. Give yourself a big squeeze, a big hug. Rocking from side to side. Massaging your lower back once again. And then when you're ready, release the legs long onto the mat. Arriving into your final pose, your Shavasana. Giving yourself all the space that you deserve. So I would say at least as wide as the mat. Palms facing up. Toes dropping heavy towards the sides. Finding that sense of complete relaxation, of complete surrender to the ground underneath you. Letting go of any remaining unnecessary tension. Relaxing your face, unclenching the jaw. Relaxing the cheeks, that space between your eyebrows. And taking a moment to find appreciation, gratitude for this time, for this practice. This energy you've dedicated to yourself for your body, for your strength, for your health, for your softness. And uh, finding finally a place of complete stillness, of calm, where your body can rest and recover and get so in the benefits of this practice. Stay as long as you need here and I would recommend at least a few minutes. Thank you so much for joining me in this class. Namaste.